guess this is goodbye. We had some good times. Hmm. You can spend the rest of your wasted existence in the deepest, darkest hole the DOC has to offer. Funny thing, that life. When you're sure things are going a certain way, the fate starts pitching curveballs. A massive manhunt is underway for these two men, Jacob Tullis and Ronald Mitchell. Both men somehow managed to escape last hey, night. Hey, man. I pass these out. Armed and dangerous. That's incredible. He's out there. Evening, y'all. Coolest cucumbers. We won't have any more problems. There's one thing I do know. It's a hunter. We're the prey. Ain't nothing keep me from my reward money. Looks like the fight's just getting started. What's up? Hey, buddy, how you doing? I'm doing good. Oh, good, good, good. I love good. it. Yeah. I love this. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Always a pleasure. Bro. You too, Dan. Well, this is one of my actors here. You can't see him. This is Dan Higgins. He's a great actor. <laughs> we are filming a horror western called Skinwalker, Ooh. which we are in the, you guys are literally catching us right in the middle of. So, so yeah, if, I, if, I, if I drive out to Tempe, I can get a walk on part. I can get killed or be. Well, the, uh, we were, we're wrapped out of Phoenix last night. So you'd have to drive up to the high country in the mountains and, but it's beautiful up there. It's not, it's cool. It's, uh, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> Sweet. Well, cool, man. You ready? Want to do some questions here? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Is the, is the audio okay or should I kill the car? No, you sound fine. Sounds great. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that because the AC is blowing, keeping me alive. <laughs> well, cool. Well, let's talk about Battlefield 2025. So tell me about the script to screen and that process. So when you've well, came it was, Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, it was a fun process. I mean, uh, director Joseph Umba is a really talented young guy, and he DP'd a couple projects for me, and he wanted to do a film, um, you know, as we usually do them on very short budgets, but driven by a lot of passion and dedicated cast and crew. So, you know, basically what we did is, I, I'm a big fan of The Twilight Zone. And, you know, a movie where the ending kind of throws you, and I'm not going to spoil it, but the ending kind of shows you that everything that you witnessed is just the beginning, um, which maybe I just spoiled it unintentionally, but hopefully in an intriguing way. It'll still make you want to see the movie. So that's kind of it. I mean, I was thinking about, you know, I've done a couple alien creature features. I'm actually, what I'm doing now is a Native American mythology creature feature, if you will. So, uh, but it's set in the Wild West. So, you know, it's a genre I'm very familiar with. And that, that was kind of my process, just starting with, you know, what can we do based on kind of the old, uh, you know, Rod Steiger, Twilight Zone type approach. And, and tell me about writing as a team. How did that work? Well, I mean, you know, Joseph, I, I tried to give, it was, I'm, I'm new to this whole EP thing and, and handing over the creative reins to somebody else. So it was, um, I had some issues there, but I've had a lot of uh, EPs myself and I've had to deal with their feedback. And, you know, I know how uh, intrusive that can be to the creative process. So I was convinced that I was going to be the good cop EP under all circumstances. So I tried to give it as much as I could that I, first of all, I needed to get what I needed, but I tried to give him as much freedom as possible within that framework. Um, and I think we worked really well together. And of course, Battlefield 2025 has a very small budget. So can you give me examples of thinking on your feet when something arose that you had to do guerrilla filmmaking or a situation where- Oh, the whole thing is small guerrilla, film? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all like today, you see, I got my truck packed with gear, but I can't see the gear, but I, I got an actor here I just picked up from a hotel. Uh, I'm the transportation coordinator, the gaffer, the grip, the PA, the, you name it. So, um, but basically, I mean, you know, there's always adversity. It, it, they, they, they stop becoming challenges after a while because they just become Tuesday. You know what I mean? So I'm just trying to think of a specific one. Uh, uh, well, you know, the cops showed up because we had fake weapons and they thought they were real, but that happens all the time. Um, geez, I don't know. It was very cold during principal photography. I will say that. Uh, that was pretty difficult. I, I, I'm trying to think of a better anecdote. I'm just not, that was, uh, just not, I'm sorry, I'm not really coming up with one on the spot. That's fine. That's fine. And were there discussions about the look of the alien? How, how many meetings did you have about that? 
Well, the alien was interesting. Marcus Koch, who did the creature design, did a great job there. You know, he um, basically, we were trying to base it kind of, you know, I'm a big fan of 1950s kind of B-movie sci-fi. Try to keep some of that influence into it, but also make it kind of cool and tacky. So real cross between practical and, um, you know, uh, 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 CGI. But, uh, you know, Joseph more or less knew what he wanted for the armor and all that. And uh, the, the mask and what he wanted the creature to be kind of all reptilian in nature. So I like that because it's kind of a throwback to the 50s stuff. So, yeah, kind of a more Joseph and me kind of concept that got together, I'd say. Uh, guy Kodiak Darling is his name, did the armor for the creature, which I thought he did an amazing job on such a short budget. The ray guns, all the cool stuff you see there. All the CGI you see in the film is all Joseph. And he, he did excellent. And then if you look at, um, I'm sorry, the, uh, the third person involved is Titus Covington who played the creature, which is super important because you've got to have a great actor playing a creature. You know, it, it, otherwise everybody's playing Frankenstein. You know, they don't know how to act real and make it, they're acting with their body. You know, they're deprived of their voice, but they have to give an entire believable performance. I remember, you know, I had the pleasure many years ago, Dan and I did, working on a film with Kane Hodder, uh, you know, who's a, excellent actor but he is you know he rose to prominence playing jason a stunt man and he worked so well like yeah you know just the excellent perfect example of a horror movie man monster who knows how to scare the heck out of you without opening his mouth or without you even seeing his face so uh, i think titus did a good job i'm not saying he's on kane's level but uh being as young as he is i think he's uh he's got a good future ahead of him and, and probably the most regal name for an alien ever, Titus Covington. I just love that name. Isn't that true? I mean, yes, Titus Covington plays the monster. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, you have so many characters in this movie, and you have to just kind of figure out which one. I loved Roy. I think he was one of my favorite characters. And also, he had the best death in the movie. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny, you know, uh, we try to give them all good deaths, but sometimes you run out of time and money. So, like, sometimes you have to go to, like, the worst is the off-camera kill. If you're just, like, you just hear them go, ah, you know, because we're just like, man, we don't have any more time. We don't have any more. We don't even have money to make any more fake blood. So let's just do this. But, yeah, he got a good one. He got a really cool one. He got zapped with a ray gun to the head, right? Yes, yeah. That was Roy, yeah. It was a good and Roy one. was funny because he, he thinks he knows everything. Sean Dillingham, very talented actor. Uh, he thought, you know, he thinks he knows all. But, of course, his wife is, you know, making a big idiot out of him behind his back. And. And she was great. Jamie Baxter played the wife. And, and Big Buck was fantastic. Tell me where you found him. He is just, I well, loved him. Michael Harrelson is his name. Michael and I go back as long as Dan and I do. Michael, if he, almost all of my movies Michael is in. He's one of my go-to, like just he'll come into any situation. There's always a great presence. And he's very versatile. You know, he looks almost like a character actor. but he And he is a character actor, but he can play many different characters. I've had him play a Russian gangster, uh, a strip club owner. I've had him play uh, uh, the really sweet old grandpa. I've had him play a uh, Catholic priest with an Irish accent. I mean, he's done it all, you know, and he's played a, a used car dealer kind of, you know, guy. So well, You know, that like, post-credit scene, Big Buck needs a spin-off movie. And that commercial- I totally Rob, agree. It had a Rob Zombie feel to it, that Rob Zombie- well, feel. that commercial, yeah. Thank you for mentioning the commercial because I had a lot of fun with that. I got my dad in that. And I shot that part of it because I just wanted to do something fun with the big buck. We needed something just filler so you see it on the television. That was all that was scripted. So Roy watching television when his wife was sneaking out to meet little buck. Um, and I'm like, let's just, so we, we made a whole shoot of it. And I said, let's not waste this. Let's put it at the end of the credit sequence. We had the bikini girls. They were great. You know, very kind of uh, just, I, I try to like look at all the worst local commercials in any city and just, it was so fun casting uh, the actors had so much fun with that because they got to like deliberately act awful. I was in that. I did a cameo in that as one of, I think I was satisfied customer number five or something. So uh, that, that was fun. I mean, yeah. that would be a really cool uh, thing to just to put online, just put that commercial. I, up. We do plan to, we yeah. do plan to, and kind of just like, you know, I love that big bucks guaranteed. And then it flashes, not a guarantee. You know, it's just the, it's fun. It's just these type of movies, you know, you never want to take them too seriously. The comedy really helps offset the gore, I think, to just try to make it fun for the audience. And the news reporter looked familiar. Any relation? Yeah, it happens to be my dad. <laughs> I know. And I filmed that in my dad's kitchen. Just greens, throw up a green screen, got my dad in there, and uh, he's Robert Conway Sr. It was great. It was, it was fun to get my dad back. My dad's actually a really good actor. He was uh, in college. He was uh, like Julius Caesar and all that, so... Um, we've been trying to get him back on set, so I finally did. <laughs> well, 
Well, Robert, thanks so much for talking to me today. I know you're a busy guy. You got your actors and you got all your equipment. You're heading off to a, a location shoot. When, peop when yes, can sir. people and where can they see Battlefield 2025? 2025 is going to be basically pretty wide release VOD. I mean, you know, you're going to have it on uh, Apple. iTunes is great. It was going to app. iTunes always has us. Uh, we're going to be on Amazon. Uh, I think, I, you know, some of the other ones like direct TV I'm not sure about. I don't want to say anything I'm not sure about, but Amazon, uh, definitely Apple, iTunes, uh, you know, Xbox, I believe. We, we usually cast a pretty wide net with VOD. Uncorked Entertainment does a great job getting us pretty much everywhere we need to be, so... Uh, yeah, hopefully you guys check it out. It's a, it's a really fun little movie. We had a lot of fun making it. Uh, very colorful ensemble cast, just a lot of different types of characters. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have everybody from hardened criminals to cheating wives to, it's like an episode of Jerry Springer, you know? <laughs> we got everybody in there. You it is. Dealers, but, well, yeah. congratulations on the movie and uh, come visit us in Las Vegas when you have a chance and hit me up. I want to be killed in one of your movies or something. That sounds like a plan, buddy. Thank <laughs> you so much. All right, good luck to you and uh, right. have a good day. YouTube, bro. Thanks so much.